Hello and welcome to Lab Choose Video. So my name is Marcia Hay. I, along with Dr. Liz O'Grady, are going to be recording some pre-lab videos for you throughout the course of the semester. So these videos are meant to be background information that are going to help you do the uh, experiments better. So this is different than the lab videos that we have that kind of walk you through some of the experiments and show you what will be happening. So this is kind of that background information. So I am in charge of labs that are even numbered. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And then Dr. Grady is taking all the odd numbered labs. So um, my job today is to kind of get you all acclimated with the microscope. So some of you enter our Bio 123 class having just taken a science class of some kind and have mastered a microscope already at some point in your life. Others of you have literally never touched a microscope. So uh, this lab is really to help get even the playing field, like put us all on the same page so that everyone knows how to use a microscope. Because we are going to continue using a scope in this course, but most of you are also planning on moving into anatomy and physiology and then microbiology, which is going to include a lot of microscope work. So I'm going to start by looking at your objectives that are on the first page of this lab, um, basically what your your responsibilities are in this lab. So the first thing I'm going to do in this first video is go through the microscope itself. Like what does the microscope do? What are the pieces? What do the pieces do? And then in the second video, I will actually cover all the rest of these objectives. I was going to start with the first objective or the, and then go through all the rest uh, to talk about how you actually find a specimen, how we can tell how big it is, where it is, the details on it. Um, so these are your key objectives for the lab. Then you have the keywords, which you can kind of think of as your vocabulary words. Words, right? These are the words that you should understand the definitions of uh, and be able to identify on a quiz or an assignment. So let's start by talking about microscopes. So there are many different ways to view items in science. Uh, we have you know, things like scanning electron microscopes. We have contrast microscopes. So in our lab, what we have is a pretty basic scope called a light microscope. It basically works on the principle that light is underneath a very thin sample and the light can pass through and we can see it. Um, so then we use multiple lenses to help us see things at higher powers, which is part of what we're going to be talking about in this lab as well. So in light microscopy, we can adjust the amount of light. Um, we can adjust the different types of specimens and the different staining that we use so that we can actually see these specimens really well. And then the microscopes have different types of magnification. So we can start as low as actually a 10x and go up to a 40x, 100x, um, 1000x on some microscopes. So magnification helps us to kind of zoom in on the object. Or right? if you think about the microscope, even like a camera, you're zooming in on the smaller specimens that there's no way that we can see as easily with the naked eye. Uh, and one of the other benefits of the microscope is that by adjusting how the light passes through the lenses, we can actually change how clearly we can see the image, which is part of learning how to master the microscope. So when we start doing our experiments here, we're going to be looking at two major things, what's called field of view and depth of field. Um, field of view is basically how much we can see at one time, and then the depth of field is how much of the objects that we can see, um, and how clearly we can see the different parts of it, which is part of the resolution. So as we walk through this lab, you should get a pretty good idea of how we're able to do this with the microscope. So let's start by just looking at the microscope. All right, so this is the microscopes that we have in our labs, both in our general biology class and your microbiology class. Uh, in our lab, we only have three uh, what are called objectives. So that will change um, these, this number right here. So we're going to go through all the parts. These are what we call objectives. So these um, are, there's only three of them in our lab. In micro, you'll have actually four of them. So let's start by just talking about the parts of the microscope microscope and what they do. So on your exam, you will be expected to be able to name the parts of the microscope. So if we put an arrow or a sticker on the microscope, you should be able to tell me what that area is. 
and what that area does. Uh, the other major thing that you need to know in this lab is how to actually use a microscope, right? What are the steps that it takes to actually focus something on the, the microscope? And then the other part about this lab is making sure that you take care of these scopes. Uh, these microscopes are not cheap <laughs> items, uh, and the better that we take care of them, the longer that they last, obviously. So we'll talk a little bit about that in the second video as well. So let's start just by looking at the parts of the microscope. Okay, so from this view, we can see a few of the things and then we'll turn it to look at the other side so that we can talk about some of the other components. So let's start with just the main parts. All right, so the top of the microscope is called the head. That should make sense, right? Um, this is where we have a light passing through, making its way to where we'll actually be able to see it. And then you have an arm because this is where you're going to be holding it. All right, our microscopes have a pretty nice handle on them that you'll be able to hold. I will say that handle is plastic, so I will also encourage you to use two hands while carrying your microscope because the base, which is the bottom part of the microscope, is then going to have a uh, like place for your other hand, right? So you hold the arm with one hand with the handle and you put your other hand under the base so that you're fully supporting these microscopes while you carry them. They're not exactly the heaviest microscope. I've ever used, but they definitely need some support. So then also on the back side here, you will see there's a cord storage. Um, and our cords on these microscopes are actually kind of separate from the scope itself. So on the microscope, if you um, see, so obviously here's the plug. It's wrapped around this plastic thing. And then right here, there's a little other end of the plug. And that plug has to be pretty securely pushed in for the microscope to work. So if you ever take your microscope out and plug it in and it's not working, um, actually check, obviously make sure the thing is plugged in. Um, but then actually check this one here to make sure that the plug is actually connected to the microscope. It's like the number one reason that the microscope won't work in the lab. Now, uh, the other parts of the microscope include uh, the rotating part that we'll talk about that is going to hold the objective. So this is called a nose piece and it does rotate. So these um, objectives here will rotate so you can move them around so you can focus on a different magnifications. And then down at the bottom here, so this if you're looking, so if you're looking in right here, all right, your left hand would be sitting right by this dial. This dial is called the rheostat. Um, this is going to control how much light is actually coming up through the microscope. So the light on this microscope is right here. The light would come up and it would pass through all of these mechanics um, so that it can pass through the actual slide that's sitting here. So you can actually adjust how bright this light is, right? And that's with this rheostat. Um, so in general, you want to keep it somewhere in the middle. Like, please don't turn it all the way up or all the way down, especially all the way up because you'll blind the next person that uses the microscope. Um, be gentle on our eyes. So as we flip this scope around, we're now looking at the other side. So again, if you were looking through the these um, oculars right here, your right hand would fall on this side. And this is where a lot of the mechanics are. The, mic the microscope, like everything else in our world, is meant for right-handed people because uh, there's a lot of control f features right here. Um, so let's start with light. Okay, so I said that your light comes through here. Right, so this is the lamp. So this is controlled by the rheostat, which was on the left side. Now the lamp, or the lamp light comes through, it can also be controlled by this little mechanism here. Uh, it is a little sliding knob, so if you turn it right and left, it will control how much light is actually passing through this area here where the slide would actually be. This is called the condenser diaphragm. It's also sometimes called the iris diaphragm because it acts kind of like the iris of our eye to control how much light is going to come up in through the slide. So the lamp can be controlled by the rheostat and then the condenser diaphragm will control how much of that light actually gets to pass through the slide. And then we also have the power switch, the on off switch, that's this little green button down here um, that you'll find pretty easily. Just turn on and off the microscope as long as it's plugged in, right? So now let's talk about lenses. So the light passes through from the lamp, right, up through the slide here, and then it's going to actually have to come up, follow the path of light up through these 
um, oculars. So the oculars are what we look through, and our microscopes are bi bi binoculars. Basically, um, there are two of them, so your eyes are going to be able to look with both eyes, which actually helps with eye strain quite a bit. I know sometimes students have a hard time getting used to using microscope with two, uh, you know, to make sure it's matching up with your eyes perfectly. You can move these, so if you grab hold of the oculars, you can actually move it. So much like binoculars, you can adjust it to your eyes, and I would suggest you take a few minutes to do that just so you can see things really clearly through the microscope. So the oculars on our microscopes have a 10x magnification. So that 10x magnification means that light is going to come through and then magnify whatever you're looking at by 10 times what we would see with the naked eye. Now we 10 times is really not good enough, right? So 10 times is really not that much. So we have another set of objectives here that are going to magnify even more. So on our microscopes, we have three, as I said earlier. So the three objective lenses that are attached to the rotating nose piece here will actually turn, All right? So the shortest of the three is called the scanning objective. This is a 4X magnification. Uh, and then there's a 10X, which is kind of the medium size objective, which is um, the low power. And then we have a high power on our microscopes that goes up to 40x. So again, when you take your microbiology class, you will have a higher power. It's 100x. It's what we call oil immersion. We will not be doing that in our class um, this semester, but you will see that as you move into your further classes. So then the other thing here, this big flat black thing is called the stage. So the stage also has stage clips on it. These clips will hold the slide snugly on the stage. Um, note that when you do look at ours, um, the stage clips are going to be flush with the stage, which means they'll physically touch the stage. So your slide will sit between the stage clips. They will not sit under, right? So you don't have to pick the stage clips up, which is common in some microscopes. Um, it can actually ruin our microscopes if you start pulling those stage clips around. So you're just going to slide the slide right in there and it's going to get hugged by the stage clips. So in order for us to talk about focusing, basically the stage is what we need to move around. The stage is going to move up and down and the stage is going to move left and right. And that's part of getting used to how your microscope is going to work. So in order to control that, we have a few things we can use. First, there's this little uh, like dangly, <laughs> okay, it's actually quite firm. It's like a stick, a stick that hangs down off of this stage. So this right here is called the mechanical stage control. Um, if there are two knobs, one will move it front and back and one will move it left to right, right? So that will actually physically move the stage clips left and right and front and back. Then we have the um, adjustment knobs, which are going to help you to focus. So if you look at this, it's a little bit hard to see from this view, but there's actually two knobs here. There's a big fat kind of clunky one at the back. That's the one I'm pointing to right now called the coarse adjustment knob. And then there's a finer tuning one, a smaller one that is farther out on the microscope. They are attached, but there are actually two knobs there. This is the fine adjustment knob. So the coarse adjustment, as it sounds like, is going to move the stage really quickly and not very carefully. Um, so that is just going to move your stage up and down. The fine focus is going to move the stage up and down, but it's going to do it in a much more controlled manner. Um, this is not going to be used as long, right? So coarse adjustment is typically used to get things quickly, um, slightly visible. And then the fine focus is what's used to make things look picture, picture perfect as you are trying to look at whatever specimen is going to be on your slide. 